This is the story of the Sukhoi Superjet test crash. Airplanes are as safe as they are because we put them through the ringer. Take the worst case scenario that you can imagine, and most of the time, I assure you, a jet has gone through it because they test it. My favorite video of this type is this one of a 747 doing a rejected takeoff. In this test, they loaded up the 747, took it up to its V1 speed, and then slammed on the brakes just to see what would happen. Well, to make sure that the plane is safe. Mind you, they were using worn down brake pads for this test, and amazingly, the plane stopped in time, even though the brakes didn't make it. Tests like these are done so that you know how planes will react in the worst of worst conditions. This is what the Russians were doing on the 21st of July 2013 with their brand new Sukhoi Superjet at Keflavik Airport in Iceland. The jet that day, which was a test aircraft, had been in Keflavik for the past month, just undergoing tests and seeing what it could do. On this day, this was the plane's fifth test flight. On this flight, the test pilots had their work cut out for them. They had to carry out test number 978, which was to simulate a Cat 3 automatic approach close to the plane's max landing weight while in a crosswind that exceeded 10 meters per second with a critical failure at 25 feet above the ground, resulting in a missed approach. When I tell you that they test everything, I mean it. To carry something like this out, a flight test expert in the jump seat would kill the right-hand engine from the ATTCS or the Automatic Takeoff Thrust Control System test panel. With all of this testing done, they started out with a test. The plane lined up with the runway and they brought the jet lower and lower. At 5.23 and 26 seconds, just as the engines were beginning to be pulled back to idle by the automated systems, the flight expert killed the right-hand engine at just 10 feet above the ground. But the left-hand engine for some reason never came on. There was no roar of an engine that pushed the test aircraft to safety, but instead the jet kept falling and falling, till it was just 4 feet off the ground. The pilot knew that something was wrong. He immediately called for a go-around and hit the toga or takeoff slash go-around button. That button basically pushes the engines to max power. Just as he did that, the main gears touched down on the runway. The pilot was perplexed. He looked at the displays and the toga mode had not engaged. He didn't have flight directors as well. He decided to carry out the go-around himself. He pushed the throttle to max power and retracted the gear. But still, no power. As the plane started to climb, it lost the little speed that it had. As the plane lost its precious energy, it started to come down towards the runway. In a bit to prevent the plane from stalling out, they tried to bring the nose of the plane down. As the landing gear was knocked down, warnings permeated the cockpit. They knew that they were in danger. This is when the pilot flying realized his folly. He had been controlling the wrong engine. His right-hand engine was the one that was inoperative because of the test, and he had been commanding more thrust from that engine. He immediately firewalled the left-hand engine in an attempt to save his plane. But it was too little, too late. As the left-hand engine started to spool up, the jet hit the runway again. The fuse loss dragged along the ground as the plane was pushed to the left by the crosswind. In the cockpit, the pilots used the rudder to keep the plane on the center line. Even though the plane was dragging along the runway, the pilot now needed to do everything that he could to stop this plane, and putting the engines into reverse would give him a little bit of stopping power, and that's what he decided to go for. But it wasn't enough. The jet went right through the end of the runway and went along for another 163 meters, or 534 feet. The pilots immediately started an evacuation of the jet as soon as the running engine had been brought under control, and thankfully, all on board survived. So, how did an experimental plane lose control so bad? Well, that was up to the Icelandic Transportation Authority, or it would be under normal circumstances. The jet that crashed was classified as a state aircraft, meaning that it got special treatment, and this crash would be investigated by the Icelandic Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Go geopolitics, I guess. To understand what went wrong, we need to look at how things should have gone. The approach would start out with the autopilot on, and then at 25 feet in altitude, the engine would be shut down. Just before they hit the minimum go-around altitude, the autopilot would be turned off. They then had to go around. Easy peasy. Well, as easy peasy as a test flight could get. On the accident flight, everything looked good until the right-hand engine was shut down. And that was planned. But as per what was planned, the auto throttle should have stayed on. But the right-hand auto throttle was disengaged, and the left-hand auto throttle stayed on. With the left-hand auto throttle being engaged, the left-hand thrust lever was pulled all the way back to idle by the auto throttle. 
Then, when the autopilot was disengaged, the autothrottle went into speed mode, which meant that the aim of the autothrottle would be to keep the jet at a particular speed. That is, if the plane was slower than the set speed, in this case 143 knots, it would add power to get it up to that speed, and vice versa. Since the jet was at 139 knots, the left engine was ramped up just a bit so that the plane could reach the right speed. Then the plane touched down. As soon as the jet touched down, all the automation was turned off, and now it was on the pilots to carry out the go-around. Right as the wheels hit the ground, the toga buttons on the throttles were hit by the pilot. But the weight on wheel signal from both struts came in at slightly different times, and so the go-around signal was inhibited by the computer. With the pilot pulling back on the yoke, the plane started to climb again, but without the necessary power. Making matters worse, the autopilot, the auto throttle, and the flight directors were off. The pilot now needed to push the left-hand engine up to power manually. But in the heat of the moment, he pushed the right-hand engine, the one that was disabled, to max power. By the time he had discovered his mistake and commanded full power from the left-hand engine, the jet was just two seconds from impact. By that time, it was too late and the plane could not have been saved. Making matters even worse, they had retracted the gear for the go-around, and so the underbelly of the plane took the full brunt of the impact, and the jet started to scrape along the runway. And we all know how that ended. This begs the question, how did such an experienced pilot make such a rookie mistake? To become a test pilot, you have to be the best of the best. You have to be the best at taking care of unknown situations. You have to handle curveballs, and you would not expect a mistake like this from a pilot like that. Well, these pilots were under a lot of stress. You see, the flight test team had five pilots, and three of them were in Iceland at this time. They had a rotation system for most of the pilots in the program. They flew for a bit, went away, came back, that sort of thing. Four out of the five pilots in the program were in this rotation, all except one, the pilot who made this crucial mistake on this test flight. He had been flying from the start of the test program. This was his 30th flight since the test plane left Russia. Just to drive the point home, these pilots were so tired that it showed up in their post-crash interviews. There was no need for a sleep test, there was no need to analyze their sleep patterns, and it was evident that this crew were pushed past their breaking point. Moreover, looking over the flight plans for the days before the crash, it clearly showed that these pilots were putting in way more hours than their maximum duty times allowed. This was because they wanted to get as much testing done before the weather changed in three days. This sort of a flying regimen opened up some new problems. When you push people this hard, they sort of shut down. For example, cognitive tasks take longer, problem solving takes a hit, and vigilance and communication takes a 30% hit. The longer you're awake, the worse these problems are going to get. And these pilots had been pushing the limit for days on end. It was just a matter of time before someone made a mistake. The number crunching showed that by the time of the accident, the pilot's abilities might have been degraded by 46%. Think about that. Half of your ability as a pilot would just be gone if you didn't rest enough. Could you do your job if you were 46% worse at it? I don't think so. At least I couldn't. For the pilots though, the flight that they were flying that day required all of this pilot's skill. In this case, things were A-OK -okay up until the last second. And then things went very, very wrong. In that moment, something as simple as getting left and right confused was the difference between climbing out and landing safely and crashing to the ground. Now you might be wondering, why make a video about such a quote-unquote inconsequential accident? The thing is, test pilots are often overlooked from the perspective of the general public. But the thing is, every plane that you fly on is safe because some test pilot somewhere put his or her life on the line at risk to fly planes at the edge of what's possible so that we know how planes will react when push comes to shove. So, if you're a test pilot that's watching this video, thank you for your service. In this case, we can all be glad that there were no passengers on board, but that's not always the case. Do watch my video on the Kegworth air disaster if you want to watch a video about something very similar. I'll have a link up on screen right now. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.